what I see there as well is that like these lads are not bulked up. These yeah. guys are lean, right? Yeah. They're they're doing the right thing. So I would see lads around Tipperary and they're like they're busting out their jerseys and they've massive legs, but they can't move, right? And like I'm not saying everyone. I'm mean, like it's a clear. It's this is. This is just, as, as, you, as you rightly say, Shane, I think as hurlers, we look, Tipperary always have naturally better hurlers than Limerick because we just, whatever, for whatever reason, traditional rise, whatever it is, we have, we're, we're, we're getting that part very right, right? But what they have done is they've brought in, they've obviously looked at it underage, said, right, we need to get these guys physically right. And if you look at the Limerick team, they're fit, like I'd say if you put the Limerick team and the, and the Tip Senior team together and went on a skills test, there's no question that Tipperary would be a way more skillful team, one, one to thirty, right? But what they do have is they're they have they're excellently conditioned. Every team is excellently conditioned. Every team is 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 a uh, is is uh, have 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 that ability to to work and to and and they have a game plan and a system that every team follows, right? So, but I just think for from from like I was involved in the Belgian squad in Tipperary for three three different uh, periods, right? And what I see is that I go in this year, right? It's left to me. Whatever I want to do, I do it, right? There's no one really monitoring what I'm doing. There's no handover from the previous management to me. I don't hand over to the next management. There's no plan. My game plan, my game style could be get the ball and drive it 100 yards, right? And the next fella could be get the ball and work it out through the lines. There's no joined up thinking, right? I now, suppose we could say that we had this they have the Satanta College thing now, but that's only that's only year one where all this stuff is going to be monitored. It's going to take like Limerick are probably ten years down the road. We're probably yeah. only entering into year two of that monitoring regime. Yeah, and even Satanta College, like there was Satanta there was Satanta lads when I was there over there doing yeah. fifteen or three or four years. There was Satanta lads helping out. But my yeah. my like the question there is like Limerick have full time S and C guys look overseeing all this. Is Satanta going to be uh, a, a a guy that's going through his training, maybe third year training, coming in, doing his apprentice work, and then moving on? And next thing he's never seen again. Do you know what I mean? Uh, is there a monitor here? Is there right? Come here. He comes in at, at fourteen years of age for twenty first or fifteen, whatever it is now, and then he's going to the seventeen team or sixteen team, and he's going to who's monitoring his progress up along both as an S and C as a player. So, do you know what I mean? And like, is it just give a list of names at the start of the under 14 and this is a Tony Forrest? And next thing, this is the same list that we're working off four years later. Like, or has there any other juveniles progressed in the clubs in Tipperary over them four years? Do you know what I'm saying to you? Like, is it really being looked at in depth? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and Owen, just to ask you a little bit more is, is this happening like as in, the county board has gone to the clubs and told them how to do this, or is each club on its own back deciding to do it? And maybe I, I don't know. Does Paul Kinnerk, who's obviously a Mona Lean man, does he have any sort of an influence in what's going on there? No, no. So like, say, um, no, they don't. But like, it's monkey see, monkey do, doesn't it? Like, so basically, mm. like, like if I have, if you have five or six or seven or eight players involved in the Limerick squad and they're going training on a Monday night and Wednesday night and on a program, and their buddies are going with them, so like. They're down the gym. They're down. They're, they're, they're down in, in the local gym and they're doing their work. And next thing, the other players are seeing this is going on. And the next thing, the Limerick team is having so success. It's 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 a domino it's effect. Culture. It's a it's culture. A culture. Like, it, yeah. it has to become a culture. It's as simple as that. And like it's the same with it's the same with Dublin footballers. Like to, to like you know about in Dublin, Shane. Like mm. the gym culture in Dublin is phenomenal, right? What they're lacking is the skills of the, of the game, the natural basic skills of the game to, to, to quicken them up. But like. From our point of view in Tipperary is we just need to be, as you say, uh, Shane Brophy, it's, we have a bit of an arrogance about us, right? That our hurling skills will get us over the line, right? But that's not the case anymore because you, if you come up against 15 lads that are conditioned, right, that can stay with you and physically shove you off the ball, right, then you're going to be in trouble. But if we can add in that physicality and that conditioning, through our clubs, and it has to be from the clubs. That's where it has to come from. Is that every club has to buy into that culture, and it's not huge expense, or it's not ha what all happens is massive gym equipment because a lot of it is just body weight and no equipment. And so uh, I think we, we saw it. We saw. I think we saw it this year with Killer One. Yeah, I don't think, in terms of talent wise or skill wise, there were probably better teams. But what were they? They looked physically. Mm. Fit like they have a way to go to go with Bally Gunner and Bally Hale, but in terms of Tipperary at the moment, 
Mm. I've seen their new gym area in Clock Jordan. Like they they bridged that gap in if in a couple of years ago where they were falling short. Where were they falling short? They were being blown off the ball by the, the Torless Arsfields in the last five minutes of games or a lot more this year. They were blowing the Kilinangans off the ball in the last few minutes of, of games, like so. Oh, yeah. do, you, do you see any evidence in Tipperary of, of clubs? Uh, and I know, obviously, you're not sticking your head in the door of every club, but do you get a feeling in Tipperary that clubs do want to respond to what the likes of Limerick are doing, or do you see the gap widening between Tip and Limerick? Absolutely, and yeah. Well, I tell you where I've seen it is we, Dalla were good enough to give us give us the pitch there for the last number of weeks there, and lights and a tourist night. Um, Colin Maher was good enough to give us the pitch over there. So, like, i seen their gym and I've seen their players coming in out of place there. And, like, they have a really, really good facility over there. And, like, the guys, the Molinas couldn't believe it because Molinas facilities are, wouldn't be a patch on on, on Dallas Silvermines facilities. So, so it's, a, it's a credit to them. Like. But, like, they're, there's a rural club in, in Tipperary, in the middle of nowhere, if you want to call it, right, that has a uh, fully lit pitch, juvenile pitch, main pitch, uh, state of the art gym, looking to do, do another redevelopment, and they're they're putting the work in an S and C into their underage and and uh, like you can like there's there's one example that I hundred percent know it for is a fact, and I know that Tumi Vera and Ken Dunn is looking into it at the moment there is and has been there for the last twelve months about putting the S and C in there and like they like it's only happening <coughs> now though it's only to say like do you know what I mean it's it's but like. As, as Shane was saying there, we're probably 10 years behind. Now, listen, you can do a lot of work in a couple of years, kilo one proved, but it's just, they say, every club is going to is gonna have to buy into it. And this S&C word, do you know what I mean? It's like, oh, is it like, is it so expensive? And as actually, I was down, I was down in Cork last night, my brother, my, my hall, my hall is down, he's in a club called Inishkara in Cork. And uh, I was down last night at the funeral in Cork and I, I called back to his house and he's young for the Senate, was going over to uh, Inishkara. Now, Inishkara, one day into media as well, Ross Gray bet him, right? So he's young for us under 15. But they had they kept their S C coach um uh for the winter that was with the senior team and he's doing two nights a week, Tuesdays and Thursdays, uh with the fifteens and seventeen thirteens and fifteens and then the seventeens and fifteens and seventeens afterwards. And there was forty two young fellas there trained last night in a in a hall in in in, in the and Cartland. So it's it's happening all over. Do you know what I mean? Mm. And the such is, we, we if we don't if we as such we have the hurdles. We just need to everybody just needs to re realize that this is part and parcel of GA now. Simple as that. Yeah, and so you were one game away from facing your brother in the Munster final. <laughs> <laughs> just, I didn't know about <laughs> that. That would have been some crack. Ross Gray one would have tricky. That that was definitely that yeah. would have divided the family. Never mind the, never mind everything else. So yeah, just to, to, to be crazy like. 